All right, we have a cylindrical plate. Let's take a look at that plate. Yeah, it looks like a cylindrical plate. Uh, it's subject to uh, three cable forces. Good, we have to have a 3D problem. It's really hard for me to make a nice illustration of a 3D problem. That's why I grabbed this problem. We can play with it. So in the, this is my positive X direction, positive Y, positive Z. I encourage you always try to figure it out. Okay, where's my X? Where's my Y? Which is the positive direction on all of them? Okay, where's my origin? Is that the origin? Usually the textbook and the authors are great at giving coordinates that make sense, that are logical, that help, help make it easy to solve the problem. Okay, there's three cable forces. So there's this, uh, looks like it's a tension force in cable A of a magnitude six kilonewtons, tension force cable B in eight kilonewtons, tension force in C, five kilonewtons. That's all good. Uh, so they all are concurrent at point D. Hey, even there, that at point D tells you where they all come, their line of action all go to that same point. Express each force which the cables exert on the plate as a Cartesian vector. Hey, that's a great problem. So I want to get a Cartesian vector for force A. That's going to be the magnitude of force A, which we already know the value of, 6 kilonewtons, times what? A unit vector, a unit vector, which gives me the direction. And I can tell it's going to be a unit vector from point A to point D, isn't it? That's how I get that, that con that's how I get the Cartesian vector. Okay, so how am I going to get, and this is the same type of equation. Let me write it three times. I'll, I'll do it for B, the magnitude of B times the unit vector from a B to D put a B there, unit vector B to D, and then uh, C is a, is, is a magnitude of C times a unit vector from C to D. Okay, how do I get this uh, unit vector from A to D? Do it from the displacement from A to D divided by the magnitude of the displacement vector from A to D. Okay. How am I going to get uh, A to D? You could get R sub D minus R sub A, a little vector addition there, or subtraction. And then how do I get these R sub Ds? Well, really, I just form it from the location of the point D, X, Y, Z. So uh, it really does boil down to, can I accurately get the locations of my points? Point A is really simple. What is the location of point? Maybe I'll leave some more room here. What is the location of point A? 0.75 comma, zero, zero, all in units of meters. Location of point B, that's right back here, a little harder. What's it in the X? Negative 0.75 times the sine of 30 degrees. I pause. Do you agree with our friend in the front? Is it 0.75 units of meters times the sine of 30? How did he get that? Well, you saw this little right triangle right here, didn't you? Or maybe you saw this right triangle, but uh, probably this right triangle right here. And then this, this length of this side right here is the distance back in the X. Did I say we're going to get good at right triangles? <laughs> yes. Okay. And then um, what's it in the Y? Plus 0.75 times the cosine of 30. And then what's it in the Z? Zero. Okay, how about point C? In the X point C, it'll be a negative 0.75. Here, because it's 45 degrees, you can mess up the sine and cosine. Because isn't the sine of 45 the same as the cosine of 45? <laughs> this is great. So I could just skip all that detail if I wanted to. Um, this is a, the right triangle, that's my 45 degrees, but let's write it out. So for that right triangle, it would be the sine of 45 degrees 
and then it would be um, minus 0.75, the cosine of 45 degrees, zero. You've got to get those locations right, otherwise we're, we're tanked, we're doomed. Now we can get, uh, this is a trivial re-expression of the location of the points into the location as a position, or uh, yeah, position vector. Um, let me do this one. Let's get the position vector A, because we have the points location for A. So if I was going to move from the origin to point A, what is that position vector for A? It's, it's just 0.75 I plus 0J plus 0K, all having units of meters. What gives me the length of A, R uh, sub A? What is that length? 0.75 meters. Okay. All right, let's do this one. Let's get the R from A to D. Well, we didn't really work on D. What was D up here? D is zero in the X, uh, zero in the Y, and three meters in the Z. So if I'm going to move from this point to from A to D, what do I move in the I? It'll be the location of D minus the location of A. When I move negative 0.75 in the, in the I, back. Oh, you're already ahead of me. You, you want to get on. Come on, go a little faster, professor. Right, zero in the J. And then what's it going to move in the K? Plus three. And that's a K. K, come on, I can write a K. And those are all meters. What's the magnitude of A to D? Well, I would jump on my calculator. I see a number of you doing the same. So it's um, three point nine two four something. Not very nice number, is it? It's three point zero oh nine two three three. Is that what you calculated? Anybody else calculate this number? Two, two people did? Three, four, very good. So now I'm going to be able to get the unit vector from A to D. I'll go back this way. It'll be negative 0.75 divided by 3.09233. That will be in the I. It'll be 0 in the J, and it'll be... Uh, plus 3 divided by 3.09233 uh, 3 in the K. No meters now. We've, we've dropped them. This had units a meter. That had units a meter. When you divide, you get that. And then now, finally, we have this force vector. Uh, we take our magnitude of F of A of 6 kilonewton. And so let me just rewrite this. F of A is equal to... Let me do the math. Six, okay. Six times negative 0.75 divided by 3.09233 gives me negative 1.455 in the I. What will it be in the J? Zero in the J. 5.82. O eight or just one K. Okay. Uh, I didn't leave enough room on this, but what are the units on that all in kilonewtons, isn't it? That's it, isn't it? You would do the same thing for F of B and the same thing for F of C. I think those are all doable now. Determine the magnitude and coordinate direction angles of the resultant force. So this is another phase to the problem. I don't think I have enough room. But what are they going to ask me to do? Determine the magnitude, coordinate, direction, angles of the resultant force. Well, how do I get the resultant force? The resultant force is the sum of F of A plus F of B plus F of C. And then you can add these. Now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have F of R and the X, I, 
plus f of r y j plus f of r z k. That's f of r. What is my magnitude of that vector? The magnitude f of r is the, the component in the x squared plus the component in the y squared plus the component in the z squared square root. And then what about my coordinate direction angles of that resultant force vector? Well, you recall that you could express the force as the magnitude of that resultant force times a unit vector in the direction of that resultant force, which was could be characterized by the cosine of alpha in the i, cosine of beta in the j, cosine of gamma in the k. If I calculated f of rx, that's equal to f of r times the cosine of alpha. The way to calculate the cosine of the alpha is the arc cosine. We've, you've done this of f of r x divided by f of r. Likewise for the beta and the gamma. Any other comments or questions?